Hi, my name is Josh. I run 20 to 25 miles a week in sandals for the past nine years now. And I loved it so much that I started my own company, Shama Sandals. And now what I'd like to do is share with you all the good, the bad, and the ugly about running in sandals so that you can do it too. Hi, this is Josh, the owner of Shama Sandals. And today on how to run in sandals, I wanna talk about two horses. Now these two horses are training and technique. Now one of the things we're gonna talk a lot about on how to run in sandals is how, right? The, the technique part of it. How to lift your feet up and put them down and how to stand up straight and move your arms, all that good stuff. But that's really only half of what it takes to run in sandals or to run, period, right? Um, we're really, when we're running in sandals, we're gonna be doing the same thing that everyone else is doing when they're running, except we're gonna be getting the feedback and it's gonna be really important that our technique is good. The other thing we have to do is focus on our training. And the reason I talk about two horses is because training and technique can't outpace each other. It's a horse race and they're, they're neck and neck, right? They're gonna be going back and forth. What I mean by the training aspect of it is this. Your technique or having good technique is only helpful if you can perform that movement repeatedly, successfully, over and over again. Now, the problem is that most people, at some point, you're gonna get so tired on your run, whether it's one mile or two miles or 10 miles, whatever your training allows, that your technique will break down. And when it breaks down, because your training doesn't support it, you'll hurt yourself. And that's what we're trying to avoid. We wanna have a good, solid run. Now, we've provided on our website, if you sign up for our newsletter, uh, we have a training guide or a transition guide to minimalist footwear. It's done by a PhD, Dr. Mike Prevost. He worked for the Navy. He did a lot of research trying to figure out how to help soldiers train. And he presents this concept in this uh, little article that we're gonna give you. But sign up for the newsletter, read this thing and check it out. But he talks about three kinds of modeling. He talks about plastic modeling, elastic remodeling, and no remodeling. What does he mean by that? Well, the idea is that if you train yourself, suppose you're just lifting weights, and you lift weights so hard that you tear some muscles and you you injure your rotator cuff or whatever it is, then you've worked out so hard that the body can't recover, and that would be plastic modeling. So, so it, just imagine a hard piece of plastic that doesn't change. The body, though, is actually really good at changing, and it, it wants to be pushed far enough that it'll break down, but it can still recover, and he calls that zone elastic remodeling. So it stretches, right? You put the body under a certain amount of load and it'll respond properly to it. Then there's one more kind of modeling, which is no modeling. Nothing happens. So you don't put enough effort in, enough breaking down of the body for any gains to be realized. So what we're looking for is that sweet spot when we're working out where we're pushing ourselves enough, but not too far. How do we do that? How do we know how far is too far? Well, there's a, a number of different ways, but uh, primarily I think a good place to start is gonna be with uh, Mike Prevost's uh, How to Transition to Minimalist Sandals. That's gonna be a great place to start, great food for thought. He actually lays out a very reasonable, very conservative guide to how to transition to minimalist footwear. I was about 30 years old, and so obviously I'd spent most of my life uh, walking, running, hiking, whatever, in just regular footwear. And actually at that time, I wasn't even what I would call a runner. I was an athlete, you know, they love playing soccer and football, anything with a ball, you know, I'm having a great time. But running wasn't the main thing I was doing. Having said that, I had this initial experience where I realized how beneficial minimalist footwear was and this whole concept of running uh, in minimalist footwear, running barefoot, and I loved it. I absolutely loved it, and I wanted to get good at it, but I wasn't a runner, and I certainly wasn't a minimalist runner, so I had like two strikes against me. For the first six months that I was doing this, you know, it might even have been nine months, my calves, this wasn't smart, I'm just telling you what I did, my calves were on fire. I, I, was, <laughs> I was sore every day. 
for six to nine months, I really don't want you to go through that. I want you to take a much more conservative approach and really think about the end game. In fact, looking back on it, when I was 30, okay, maybe I could, I pulled it off, right? Uh, I ran too much, but I was young enough that I was able to recover. If I took that same approach today at 40, I don't think it would work. And a lot of you are gonna be going through that same uh, excitement when you do take your first run barefoot and realize, wow, there's something really different about this. Or your first run in sandals, and you're like, man, this really works. I feel better, my, my stride is shorter. Um, I'm able to, to breathe properly because I'm not taking these big long strides. I'm not overworking, I'm, I'm efficient, and this is great. And you're gonna be like, I just wanna go out and run the 10 miles I was already running. Hold on, slow down a little bit. You really need, remember these two horses, you need your training to be somewhere around your technique, right? It has to be able to support that technique or you're gonna hurt yourself. So that's really the thing that I wanna impress upon you today. Check out that Mike Prevost training guide and show some restraint. It's not something that I'm really good at, the restraint thing, but take your time transitioning, use the guide and get a game plan a conservative one and stick to it and really make sure you're making those proper strides with your training before you go on too far with your technique. All right, so I'm going to show some restraint today. I had a long week. Um, I've been working really hard in the workshop and it's even though I want to run a long way, I know it's going to be better for me to find a run that's easy to do. So I'm going to head to the Yacht Harbor where it's nice and flat, a couple little hills and just do like a, a, a middle distance run for me. So let's, let's head out there, give it a shot. So here I am at the Santa Cruz Yacht Harbor. And the reason I'm coming here today is because uh, this is one of those runs where I've got it mapped out. I've run this thing so many times. It's a nice, easy run for me. Um, there's not a lot of uphills, it's just a few little mild hills. So I'm really just focusing on having a good run today because I'm tired this week. So I was uh, mentioning this idea of uh, different kinds of modeling, plastic, elastic, and no modeling. And so one of the guys that I get information from, I'm a local physical therapist here, great guy, Jeff Moreno. He's also the founder of a company that really looks at this basic issue of what is the right or proper amount of training that you should do and it doesn't just have to be running it could be you know weightlifting or you know whatever it is whatever kind of thing it is you're doing there's like a, a proper amount you know and um, one of the things he says about running just to give you an example not only can we get in trouble if we do too much we can get in trouble if we don't do enough so we really need to find that sweet spot. And he says you need to run three times a week. Now he doesn't say how much during those times. Actually he does. He would tell you that you don't want to increase that amount week over week by all that much either. So there was a big, we'll call it a kerfuffle over Vibram Five Fingers years ago. And the, you know, it was just such like a, a big moment for a lot of people to realize, hey, uh, you know, and plus the book Born to Run, and just this whole idea that, you know what, maybe there's a different way to run, maybe we're not running the right way, um, maybe we can just go barefoot all of a sudden, go minimalist all of a sudden, and it'll solve all our problems. And, like this miracle, miracle cure. And that's that's kind of what I was feeling, what I was excited about. And the thing was, if you actually did take your shoes off and run, you could feel a difference. I could breathe when I was running, minimalist, because I wasn't taking such a long stride. It's like this whole new world kind of opened up to me. But, the big problem is that a lot of us 
we overtrained and we started in on this thing too too quickly so this idea of training and technique training and technique it's really important Well, here I am at the end of my run, and I really did take it easy today. I spent time filming and just enjoying the run and not trying to push it as hard as I can. And I'm gonna save that for another day, probably next week, and then a little more rest over the weekend. Um, I really hope that you check out our newsletter, uh, subscribe to it, download the um, little short six pages uh, instruction guide from Mike Prevost on how to transition to sandals especially. I think it's really helpful for anything that you're going to do, any kind of um, exercise training. Oh, and it's just good food for thought to think about what is the sweet spot? Where do I really want to be when I'm training? The other thing I want to say, I'm going to do a plug for Power Lab, Jeff Moreno. Um, if you're not sure if you'll be able to figure out that sweet spot, Go ahead, get yourself a GPS watch, and then sign up at Power Lab. It's like 15 bucks a month, something like that. And you just feed the information in. They tell you if you're in the, the right spot or not. So those are a couple, couple really helpful tools. I hope you try them out, and hopefully you have happy, pleasant, injury-free. So uh, I'll see you next time as we share more how to run in sandals. Later. Thanks for watching this video. If you enjoyed it, hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe to our channel for more weekly content. And make sure to click the bell so that you'll be notified every time we post something new.